Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today, we'll be focusing on our newest MXE5 Matrix Mix engine. So we'll walk through that here today, and we certainly appreciate you taking the extra time to spend some time with us this morning. So today, like I mentioned, uh, we'll be talking uh, certainly about the MXE5 Matrix Mix engine. We'll talk about the hardware components, uh, right, so the unit itself, some hardware accessories, and then, of course, uh, we'll be talking about uh, MXE5 actually in the new sound, SonicQ sound system software that will be available. There will be a new version coming out here to support MXC5, and uh, we'll be going through a couple examples there, as well as some application examples here at the end. So uh, my name is Rob Ferguson. I'm the uh, marketing manager here for North America, focusing on our Dynacord and Electrovoice brands. And today I have uh, Jonathan Bailey here with us. Uh, he's our global product manager for Dynacord Electronics. And I'm actually going to invite him to come up on the line here, and he's going to walk us through uh, MXC5 today. Welcome, Jono. Hey, thanks, Rob. Thanks for thanks for that, and thank you everybody for joining us uh, today for the MXC5. The MXC5 is a you know a very new product for us, and um, it's it's a very exciting product for us um, because we've come to North America. Um, to, from 2017, uh, starting to introduce amplifiers with the L series and the C series, and uh, now we are looking at um, uh, expanding that with DSPs and um, a range of DSPs from Dynacord to um, to really create a whole system from um, DSP matrix and mixing concepts right through to the amplification concept, and then giving you uh, the ability to add speaker systems um, after that um, from various manufacturers. Um, the MXC series, as Rob was saying, my name is Jono Bailey. I'm the global product manager. If you're wondering why it's dark outside there and you haven't quite placed the accent, I'm in Australia at the moment. Uh, so just in case that, that question is bugging your mind while, uh, while I go through the presentation. Um, yeah, the MXC5. It's a very, very uh, cool unit, and we will get right into why it is so cool. And one of the reasons why it is a particularly unique unit on the market, there's a lot of DSP matrices out there, really. Um, but why is this different? Well, we have to look at some of the specifications that, that are really out there, for, especially the audio specs. We're an audio company. We pride ourselves on being audio. So. I took uh, some screenshots of some of the some of the processes that are out there in terms of their dynamic range or signals noise, um, and to see see what's out there. So we have some BSS products, some DBX products, some Dolby Lake, um, another Dynacord product, and even a PVM media matrix on screen at the moment. What you'll notice is is that the ranges are from about 105, and then all the way up to where the Dynacord sits, and that's about 115, which is quite good. Um, what you're probably thinking right now is that you're looking at the DBX and the Dolby Lake and some of these familiar names and you're going, John, those are really old products. Why would you do that? And you're absolutely right. These are old products. In fact, the PV Media Matrix was from 1993. Um, it was the first type of matrix that really kicked a lot of these things off because everything else during that time period and before that was a speaker processor. Um, and that's a completely different product. And so some of these on screen, they are speaker processors, no doubt. PV Media Matrix um, was a uh, system processing engine, um, and then it became a matrix functionality on top of that. So it's around about 107 dB. So that's great. That's where we've come from. That's the history. There's your history lesson, your TED talk, so to speak. So where are we today? Well, honestly, we haven't gone anywhere. We're at 108, roughly. Some at 107, some at 105 still. Um, up to about 110, but some, there's also a lot of latency on the systems there. They're around about three milliseconds of latency. Um, so not really professional products. Um, and these products do get put into professional applications a lot. And for no other reason is that there isn't much out there that's really at a high end. In fact, as a matrix, there is nothing out there. Uh, there's a lot of speaker processors, but there is no other matrix out there that's got good, proper audio specifications that we would call professional. So 
um, that's where we've come in with the with the um, with the matrix mix engine, just to just to amplify or um, badumch amplify, um, just to really reinforce this. Um, why other companies haven't done this is because if you go to their landing pages on their websites, you'll notice that they're very very interested in video conferencing, meeting rooms, huddle rooms, corporate type applications, boardrooms, and realistically, these are being just plugged into some amplifiers with some ceiling speakers and they're doing voice applications, maybe some background music applications. That's what these systems are designed for and they are very good at it, but they don't need the audio quality that you need for a professional system with you know, a two-way box and some subs or a three-way system or whatever it happens to be, line arrays, uh, whatever that is. Um, Therefore, they don't even publish. Many of these guys don't even publish audio specifications anymore. The A&E specs for several of them never ever mention a single audio spec. And then on top of that, if you actually go to the engineering sheet and look for the audio spec, it's not there anymore. So it's very interesting that audio and the quality of audio is not a concern for these guys but it doesn't need to be because their applications are different. So where have we focused here? We've focused more on live production, the bars and clubs. So you need you know, multiple um, system controls and you also need uh, multiple zones and high audio quality, high SBLs, performing arts centers, houses of worship, sports venues, even schools and things like that. So there is a lot of these, specific, these um, applications that require higher audio specs than what is, should be provided because you do have very good speaker systems, not just from, from Electrovoice or from Dynacord, but around the whole range of products on the market, there's excellent speaker systems and we're not providing, this is now the weak point in the signal chain for the, for the DSPs. So, Let's look at the audio specs. We're at 118 dB. So as you can tell, that's a significant jump in, uh, in quality. Uh, the THD plus N, extremely clean. The sampling rate is 96 kilohertz sample rate, which for a DSP matrix, again, not a common thing. You may think it is because, you know, we think mixes 96 and then there's a whole bunch of pro amplifiers on the market uh, that are either coming on the market or there's at least a handful, especially from us, for IPX and TGX, that's 96. Um, our latencies are incredibly low. Like I was saying before, some latencies are up to three milliseconds latency and we're down to 0 0.22. Um, signal processing, very, very pow powerful processing uh, put into this unit. It's a 24 by 24 matrix um, and it's got GPIO, all of those kind of things. So in terms of its specifications, its audio quality, definitely top of the pile. Uh, we're really, really going after the performance aspect of this. On the rear, and having a look at some of the other parts of this, yep, it's got Euroblock connectors, yep, it's got Dante and OCA combined, so that's our Omnio um, situation. And you can run this as a glitch-free, transparent, or RSTP, RS TP, yep, mode um, for your redundancies. These are essentially redundancy um, uh, topics. So uh, separate network control port for multicast filtering. So that's ideal for plugging in a Wi-Fi router. So if we have the ports here, you see a separate control port. You could put just a, a normal Wi-Fi router in there and that's to filter off all of the excess traffic and really only pass through what you need to um, onto the system makes it ideal. Uh, there's eight GPIOs for both analog uh, logic, input logic, output logic. Um, there is a 10 volt supervised um, short circuit protected power for the GPIO. It's 48 volt fan to power on all the inputs. There's a system manager, there's an OCA controller, and there's a plug-in for QSIS as well. So if you do need to use a QSIS system, because they are very good at doing video conferencing and things like that in some meeting rooms, boardrooms and other places, um, we can link into that system as well. So, GPIO, 
and also we have the internals of it, which we'll go through some of them uh, shortly, uh, but there is a lot to get through and there is also more to come. So this is a first generation and a first um, phase of our development plan of DSP. It is not a one-off product. Um, we have um, several products coming um, as well as um, expansion on this product. So this product will evolve and expand with, with more and more features as we go in the future, just with the software upgrades naturally. So some of the accessories that are coming out um, with the product. The TPC1 is the touch panel controller. It's a 5.7 inch touch panel. It's incredibly um, bright and very uh, dynamic. Um, a range of brightness for 450 nits. Um, it's full HD. It's very easy to install. In fact, it's got a universal installation and it also fits into really small wall cavities because it's only like 0.8 of an inch um, at the rear that actually sits in there. So you've got plenty of room in a, in a dry wall or cavity wall to really um, to take that, um, that uh, Cat6 cable, Cat5 E cable, um, and plug that in. It also fits in EU, UK, US wall plates. US obviously uh, for people I'm speaking to today, but I, I know that there's some, uh, some people for Europe as well. So it'll fit into the, the European or the US or the UK uh, wall plates and wall boxes. Not a problem there. And it also has a theft resistant locking, which is worth mentioning because there is a number of wall panels out there that don't have any theft resistance. You can simply walk up to them and click them off the panel, click them off the wall. Um, so to stop that from happening, yep, there's some theft resistant locking. And then the whole thing, the surface of it um, is freely configurable in SonicQ. And we're gonna run through some of that today just to show you, give you a couple of examples of how, how configurable this is. Next, we have the uh, professional um, connector panel. Professional connector panel is XLRs um, here and they can plug into the back of the MXE as a nice patch bay or patch panel. Also will work with the future releases for the MXE series. So this is the MXE 5 and there's future releases of MXE and this will plug into it there. And if you have a closer look, you may be able to tell what's on the new products as well, but I'm not gonna go into that today. Moving on, we're talking about the software. And so SonicQ, I know a lot of you have used SonicQ or you've heard of SonicQ. Um, SonicQ is our system software um, and it's a system software. It's not just a product software, it's for the DSPs, the mixing, the wall panels, the amplifiers, um, and even uh, the loudspeakers that you, um, you put into the system and you control it all extremely easily. Um, it's a drag fly out kind of configuration. Please have a look into it. Um, you'll see a little bit of it today, um, but I'll run you through some of, the, some of the newer things that you'll see on the 1.2 version of SonicQ that will be coming out um, and you'll be able to see MXE in there. First of all, it's a fixed architecture in MXE in its first phase, and it will be going open architecture, but in the first phase, fixed architecture, uh, which makes it quite simple and easy to use as well. So gain control, obvious, um, but then also you have a pilot detection mode. So the pilot detection is for getting um, your surveillance or supervised loudspeakers and being able to supervise those and easily. Next, you can set up your input patch. So there's 24 analog um, mic line inputs, um, and tw sorry, 24 Dante inputs, 12 mic line inputs uh, via analog on the, on the device. It also has direct access to the Dante controller from this page. So you simply set up which inputs go where into the system, and uh, you can instantly have those in there. There's a VU meter, and then after that, there's a whole range of different uh, controls from delays, parametric EQs, input trims, duckers, noise gates, compressors, parametrics, all kinds of things. So you can have a look at that at your own leisure. I'm not gonna run through all of them today, but they do have, for instance, the, uh, the noise gate compressor and ducker all have side chains with, with a um, 
source um, that you can set for them. Yeah, it's it's very very prof it's obviously very professional, but it's very very um, in depth. Really really good uh, good stuff in all of that. Next is the zone mixer. So when we talk about the zone mixer, we pre-configure for you um, the ability to, you know, put in uh, which zone inputs to which zone outputs, a number of buses that you can have internally, um, and then whether you want that zone to be mono or stereo, and it all pre-configures this for you. And as soon as you start selecting those, what happens is then it loads um, the speaker the speaker processing then gets loaded as a single block into this area of the signal chain. Once that's loaded, obviously there's FIR filter sets, there's, there's a whole heap of uh, stuff in that signal chain um, that can be loaded. And you can even load third party speaker presets in there as well. You may get questions about that at the end today. Um, the zone mixer here, that we have on screen. So that I've pre-configured a zone mixer. Uh, you can see a bunch of channels on screen. It's very easy to control. You simply select which zone that you want to control and then the mixer is now configured for that zone with the zone name. Let's slide up, you can see the levels across the top. Um, it looks like most of the, um, of the digital mixes. If you're familiar with a digital mixer, which I think most of we would be, uh, you can easily work out how this uh, how this gets used and, and operated. So let's have a look at the wall panel. Well, to start configuring a wall panel, first we must uh, go to Sonic Queue, select panel, and then we'll put a, uh, an empty flyout onto the screen. So an empty panel and open designer. From the designer here, you can see that um, it's just an empty box, obviously, but we can transform this and make it any particular size we want to make it inside uh, the, uh, the configuring the, the panel designer. You'll see there that there was a preset for the TPC1, but we could actually make it any type of uh, size that we wanted to within the desktop that we, we're using. Um, this is because this program will eventually become our app control. So you'll be able to configure this for, you'll bring your own devices for Android, for iOS, for, for other things into the future. So we're just gonna use it for uh, TPC, but um, that gives you a bit of an insight today. We're gonna put in a name at the top, so you can add your own text here. Um, now it's not just a normal text box, you can select you know, the size of text, um, whether you want it bold, what colors, we can put in you know, a pretty line down the bottom of it with a weighting on that line nice Dynacord blue um, to fit our style guide. That looks really nice. So from here, we can grab some controls. So we're gonna grab um, straight from the zone mixer and take the whole thing and just dump it in there. So we didn't have to make this even in the zone mixer, it already got made for us and we can just dump them straight into the, to the panel control. And then you can see there, as soon as we deploy that, it's working instantly, straight off. Moving on, we can configure how those particular modules look on screen. So those input modules that we moved around, we can put the, um, the labels at the top, we could put the uh, values at the top, we can change that all around. It's, it's not really a big problem to, to make that how your user wants to use or wants to see those particular items on screen. If you didn't want mutes on there or you only wanted mutes, absolutely no problem to, to do any of that as well. We're gonna place in a button, so something different, a different item, um, and we're gonna change that to button and call it power, so it just becomes a power button for the, for the device. Um, we can light it up and say it's green when it's on, um, we're going to choose the function that's a power button here. And then once we have a look at the device itself, we can see that you know we're controlling, one's the panel, that's the panel. The panel is now controlling device. Simple as that. Very, very easy to do. 
Next, let's look at putting another panel on screen and then we'll duplicate that across. So, you know, just drop in, drop in the, uh, the, the items across here. We could drop in an extra if we wanted to. Change the format to being a bit wider, not an issue. Put an extra one on screen. Now you can modify, as I was saying before, you can modify these and even stretch the stretch the elements across screen to make it neater. And um, yeah, you can edit this any way you like. It's not just a fixed element on screen. They all scale um, and, and look. So here we go. We open the second panel, and we can see second panel. It's done. So we're going to call this um, area stadium, but we can also make another tab at the top of the screen um, as the suites. And we can show the scaling on here as well. Um, that we can move that down and we can make two buttons at the top. So there's a, there's a stadium zone and a suites, so or the back of house or public areas, galleries, whatever you wanted to call it here. And then we change the function of those buttons so that the suites has sort of similar control elements screen, we see the stadiums and we see the suites and we can just go between the two as tabs at the top of the screen. We can also load in uh, Dynacord logos or your logo or any particular um, vision or animate, not animation, but any uh, any uh, drawing that you want. So if you wanted a system schematic in the background so that you can put a plan of the venue around and say, oh, this, this area here, press on that area, and then it loads that area, just controls to screen, all of the things like that, all completely possible to do. So here we have the stadium element. We could put that on screen, obviously. Control it, hit the layout. We can move that layout and actually expand it. See all of those controls get expanded as well. So it's all scaling. Let's look at the demo and the fault test. So we're going to set up a fault here on an IPX amplifier. And the fault, not that it is a fault, is the screen becomes unlocked. Um, on the on the amplifier, and it will send and gather um, that fault condition back to the MXE because the MXE contains the ability to gather the faults from the entire system, and then you can log them. They're all logged, and you can see them on screen. Um, so you have that single point of reference. So here we go. We unlock the panel, and we see the fault instantly occurring back on the screen there. But that can be set up for network fails, for uh, mains warnings, for uh, yeah, telnets, uh, anything you want it to do. If something else, you know, the DSP gets changed to, to 48 and it's a 96, you know, all of that will get logged back and then you can be able to interrogate that uh, separately. Looking at the GPIO, setting up GPIO, we do have analog in, um, we have digital outs um, and digital ins, and you can test that from this screen here, which is cool. And same for the amplifiers. The amplifiers also have GPIO. Yes. Um, now, what we can do is go to settings. If you go to the OCA controller, now we're going to build a GPIO uh, using our OCA controller. So we can make this job name. We can refer to that as a, you can put anything in there you wanted, but we're going to call this recall um, user preset one with GPI one. So that's our title, name. 
Then we connect these device, so it's the matrix system, and then we put in which pin, so how it's going to, uh, to communicate, and what it's going to communicate to. So it's going to communicate to these devices, which is the amplifier one via the user preset one is going to be the result here, but we could actually connect multiple um, devices in this list that all recall at one time. Now what you're seeing here while we're doing this, we're going to put in multiple devices. This is uh, like Scratch. Um, it's a programming, very simple programming um, thing. If you're not familiar with it um, and you want to become more familiar with it, there's like a million tutorials online that you can grab. Um, it's yeah, open to anybody. We also will have our own, um, obviously our own training on this uh, that you can have a look at. But um, in the meantime, if you, if you want to get familiar with this type of programming, um, yeah, look at Scratch or um, one of those programming languages. It's just a jigsaw puzzle. You can put it together. It's very hard to stuff up. Um, and once you do it two or three times, yeah, you're, you're sorted forever. We just duplicated that, as you could see on screen, very, very quickly and easily. So we did a recall preset of one and a recall preset of two on two different GPIs to four different amplifiers, all recalling on different pins in the same way. So quick, easy, click deploy, deploys it to the amplifiers in your system, and away you go. At this point, I'd like to invite uh, Rob. Could you join me back again? We'll go through some of the um, the applications and some system examples. Let's go. Sure. There he is. Cool. So um, we'll look at some of the some of the basic systems here. There's a school and a traditional house of worship, and we have an MXE on screen connected to some L and C series amplifiers, um, and they could be turned on via the GPIOs from the MXE. Um, and there's a TPC-1 as a, as a system uh, go-to. Sure, yeah, and I can certainly see this for a couple other applications, a school, uh, maybe a smaller house of worship, but certainly something like a small sports facility, uh, maybe a sports bar, restaurant, club, um, or even more commercial spaces, like where we're using maybe some commercial loudspeakers, like a hotel lobby or something like that. We could see something quite yeah. similar. And I think Absolutely. one of the nice things here too is that uh, with the LNC series amplifiers, now we have this new firmware update where we can use the LNC series amplifiers within SonicU, uh, so we can actually configure both the MXE5 and the CRL series amplifiers all within the same project file. So that's that's a nice advantage that we have have available now. Yeah, definitely, definitely a huge advantage to have um, a cost-effective amplifier like that that can be pulled into the network um, and configured in the same way as the other devices. So yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, next, let's let's grow the system and use some IPX, some digital amplifiers with more Dante um, involved here. So we still have um, some local inputs directly to the MXE. We also have a console um, that's coming into the system via Dante um, to IPX amps um, running main auditorium delays, fills, or perhaps even external zones with different sources. Um, so in a house of worship, that the external zone could be a children's church or uh, you know, the bathrooms or, or the, the the lobby or, or anywhere really. Um, but yeah, it's it's quite a powerful powerful system here. Yeah, and I think the nice thing with the uh, this application you have up for whether it's performing arts, house of worship, sports, or another application, certainly we're focused on. Uh, having the best audio quality. So for this system, we're running full 96K resolution uh, because we're using the IPX amplifiers, right? So those run at full 96K, so we're doing a loudspeaker processing there. And then, of course, the MXE5 can still operate at 96K. Certainly, we have the flexibility with uh, the MXE5 to run a loudspeaker processing at the MXE5, but uh, we're limited to only 48K today. So for this one, certainly, uh, it does certainly make sense to run it at full 96K. Yeah, which provides it as pretty a pretty unique system for the for the style of system that it's running. So yeah, very cool. Um, to add to this system, if we were to add something to this system, we could, um, and it, it gets more in depth in the future with future upgrades as well. Is that another MXE 
plugged into this system can work as a, uh, a monitor console, essentially. So um, the, the musicians on stage could use either a TPC-1 um, or they could use a bring your own device with, with an app and actually do uh, mixes for themselves on stage for their ears or, or at their monitor wedges as well. So that's definitely worth, uh, worth pointing out. Is that separately to that, you can turn the, the front of house console off in this system. So if it, the console at the front of house was not needed, there's enough mixing capabilities because it's a matrix mix engine. We actually build in uh, not only a zone mixer, but there will be a virtual mixer um, on the product as well um, that will allow you to perhaps not use the console during midweek. If you've only got a, a few musicians or, or it's a simple performing arts setup, um, and you don't need the console, um, you just can happily mix with you know, five or 10 inputs or eight or 12 or up to sort of 24 inputs here. Um, you can do that from a tablet um, or from, from the, uh, the TPCs as well. So yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. Stepping up again into a stadium in larger and larger systems. Um, first of all, we have a back of house area. Now that's an MXE that's running to analog CPS amps here in uh, perhaps they're running um, a high Z system, a 70 volt system uh, and a bunch of TPC ones um, that are connected to that to run suites or, or particular areas around the venue for all the back, back of house. The control room itself. Now I've added in the, um, the CP uh, MXE, the, the control panel, the, the connector panel. Um, that connector panel can work as just a patch bay uh, to, into the MXE. So perhaps you have, you know, control room microphones or, or something else that gets plugged in and out, a console that may or may not be there from, from week to week, day to day, venue to venue. Um, yeah, it's, it's very useful in that uh, configuration as well. And then it's running to obviously the IPX amps so that any fault monitoring comes back to the centralized point um, at the control room and all the speakers can be supervised, um, all of that. Yeah, and I think one of the nice things with this example too, if you look at back of house, uh, the MXC5 is actually driving the loudspeaker processing um, and using some non-DSP amps, which can make it very cost effective. So certainly for a lot of commercial applications, um, you know, and, and some perform performance applications where 48K resolution is, is enough, which usually it is, um, we can use a non-DSP amp or several non-DSP amplifiers uh, to actually drive the system. So uh, that, that's one unique differentiator there with the MXC5 there for back of house. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about live production, uh, here we're using a MXE as a uh, console collector, console switcher. Um, obviously with the connector panel, perhaps some microphones plugged in directly to the MXE um, for when you're switching from one console to the next and perhaps there's a host on stage or a house um, artist on stage in between um, the, the back, back, back line change. Um, you can mix from the tablet at that point or from the PC um, and, and do the console change as well as keep those microphones open, keep those live. You don't have to find a place for them to live somewhere else or add a fourth console to the, to the front of house. Um, so quite, quite a useful thing. And again, because of the um, audio quality of the system, you can run everything at 96. You can have everything you know, super clean, super clear. Um, you don't have to suffer any audio quality uh, differences between pure quality there. I've added a TPC one down at front of front of house here, just uh, in case the systems engineer was down at um, at, at stage end um, and needed to do a console switch from down there uh, for for whatever reason. You could actually have some control that's uh, that's placed anywhere within the network. TPC um, would get you away. Quite well there. Cool. Now we're talking about let's let's take this to the max. So let's look at a, a complete system expansion. So I've got three MXE fives on screen here. One MXE is doing 
like a large control room. It's got a console. It's got uh, the ability to have 12 mic inputs into it, as well as the console. Um, that's creating a bunch of submixes here that get drawn down into that centralized um, matrix area and then onto the IPX amplifiers. On the left side of screen, uh, you'll notice that we're using, yeah, we're using some Dante, analog to Dante um, converters here, but also we're using some cheap cost-effective uh, GPIO controls. Um, so these are some controls and wall panels there, so to, to really um, make this area more cost-effective. Um, again, some submixes, or perhaps they're actually doing some local um, outputs in that area as well, which would you know, expand the number of um, outputs that you can get from the system. So here we have 48 inputs coming into the system. We have somewhere between 24 to 72 output zones in this system uh, with a TPC-1 as well controlling everything. Anything Perfect. you want to add there, Rob? Well, you, you touched on it a little bit, but um, you know, one of the things I noticed about this system example that we have here is that we are using some third-party uh, volume controls and wall controllers uh, utilizing the GPIOs here um, to, to do some basic parameters, right? So the TPC-1 is a great touch panel controller with a lot of flexibility, and it's very robust, certainly. Um, and certainly probably makes sense for a lot of system examples, but if you have a zone or area or a general, uh, you know, application where you just need some basic control parameters, uh, you can use some third-party devices out there in the market just to, uh, just to do a little bit of volume control or, or preset selection uh, quite simply. So that's, uh, that's yeah, something that's, that's uh, I noticed here, yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's really important. And, and that GPI control, especially with that 10 volt, um, the 10 volt can pretty much run, you know, everything. That you need to. Um, there's a lot of matrixes out there that um, don't supply quite a lot of voltage, and this is one that does supply you know, reasonable voltage for relays, VCAs, um, all of that kind of thing. So here we have um, some pre, um, some you know, source selection or, or preset selection here, um, and volume controls in those zones, and then there's a bunch of other things. We've shown some some RDL product here, but again, these are these are not not proprietary products to us or anything like that. So just in summary, we're talking about very, very high audio quality for the Matrix, 96 kilohertz uh, Matrix processor. It has the industry's lowest latency. I can't find anything that's even close to it in terms of 0.22 of a millisecond. Um, most of them sit around a 0.8 up to 3 milliseconds, um, depending on what you're looking at. The outstanding signal to noise and, and the audio specs on this on this product. It has advanced mixing. It's one of the very unique things. So it's got an innovative zone mixer, which you saw, but it's also going to have in the future a virtual mixer that will have multi-effects processing. Um, it is the complete package solution. You don't need cards. You don't need to expand it. We're not giving away licenses. It just is the complete package of a product. Um, and it's integrated with our SonicQ software, so you have system-wide control over the entire um, system. Um, there's more applications. We just went through a few of them. Um, everything from commercial applications, yes, we do have a lot of those features that, um, that is required for those boardroom markets, um, but also we do sit in a place that is in the performance market sector. So houses of worship, conference centers, stadiums, um, those kind of things as well. Completely suitable for live performance. Let's talk about things that are coming up. So things that we do have um, plans to implement over the next little while um, are on screen at the moment. These include um, AEC for echo cancellation, ANC, AGC, uh, Crestron control integration, there's app control that's going to be coming, um, free configuration architecture within SonicQ, task engines, the virtual mixer that I've talked about, full auto mixing capabilities. Um, there's also what's not only advanced room combining capabilities, of course. Um, and then we're going to have an MXE 10, which is a much, much 
bigger version of it at 128 by 128. All the same features plus a lot more. In that, I'm not going to say too much more there. These are preliminary plans. Details of these, um, the specifications of these, we're not giving out, but uh, the release dates and versions are also to be confirmed. But this is just to let you know that there is a lot more coming. This is not um, the end of the story for the product um, and also future products. This is a series of products. So we will have a full series of DSPs um, as well as a full series of amplification. Pricing. Da -da. Here we go. MXE5, 3,190 USD, which makes it extremely good value. If you've had a look around, and I'm sure that most of us have seen Matrix units on the market, this is good value. Uh, the TPC1 touch panel, just a tick over a thousand, definitely within that price range. Um, and the capabilities of this, uh, especially with um, the ability to do pretty much anything with it that you can think of, um, makes it really, really uh, very good value, especially as you can do a complete system control interface on it for all the zones if you wanted to. Um, to set that all up. Uh, so you just need the one panel and you can do zone control over everything in the venue from one location, not a problem. And then there's the connector panel. The connector panel, it's coming at the end of the year. Uh, we'll give you price on that coming soon um, when we once we confirm it, but it is coming at the end of the year. So it won't be available in the first um, next couple of months, but later towards the end of the year. So that's all I have to share today. Um, I believe, Rob, that um, we yeah. uh, do have some Q&A. Perfect. All right, let's take some of these questions we have here. The first question we got here is, what is the total I.O. capability of the MXE5? Now, I think we touched on this okay, a little so, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, yeah. the total I.O. capability is you have 12 analog inputs, which are mic line inputs. And then on top of that, you have 24 Dante channels. The internal matrix of it is a 24 by 24, but you can select any of those 12 plus 24 uh, to, to go into that matrix, um, which is not uncommon for people to say, hey, no, it's actually a 12 plus 24. It's actually, you know, it's, it's more than what it is. Um, I know of a couple of products on the market, very expensive products on the market, mind you, that say that they have um, 20 inputs and 16 outputs, but they only have four buses internally. Um, so yeah, it's it's 12 analog mic line input, 24 Dante inputs, 24 Dante outputs, eight line outputs. All right, thank you. Um, in the same vein, uh, I guess uh, one of the questions we got here was, uh, how many MXE5s can I use in the same project? I think we showed a couple examples. Uh, is there a maximum number of MXE5s in a project, or does that kind of depend? There, there is a maximum. It's more than what you would realistically use. Um, I think we're testing with some insane number at the moment. Um, I couldn't tell you that exactly but let's say it's way more than say 10. It's more like 50 or even more than that. We don't know what the actual maximum is because it's a theoretical, but we do test with sure. something like 50 uh, virtual units in our, in our system. So it's not, a, it's not a small number whatsoever. So if you're thinking two, three, four, five, easy, not an issue. So I've got another question here. Um, so it sounds like it is a fixed architecture unit and uh, there is no expandable I.O. like QSYS unless you go with Dante Solutions. Yeah, so at the moment it is a fixed architecture unit. Um, th what I showed you there is, is fixed architecture or se what we call semi-fixed architecture. Um, it will be an open a possibility to choose between fixed and open architecture. Um, we are just putting that in place at the moment. Um, so in the future, we will be going to a full open architecture configuration with MXE5 and yeah, therefore it is um, then completely open. 
Perfect. Thanks, Jono. And then, uh, you know, I think this is the last question we'll have time for, but uh, when will the new version of SonicU be released that has MXE in it? Okay, so the new version of SonicQ will be SonicQ version 1.2. Um, now, we will be putting out there, and I hope I'm not giving away too much information here, but there will be a beta available in mid-July. Um, keep your eye out for it. And also the full release version we're planning on end of July as well. Perfect. So very, yeah, so very end of July. But um, yeah, yeah keep, keep your eye out for the beta if you want to have a bit of a look at it offline. Yep. You don't, yeah, and it, it'll be... Uh... send your purchase orders in, have a look at it with the real <laughs> product as well. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so it's, it's coming real soon. So um, certainly uh, keep your eye out there for the software itself. But uh, we will have hard. We do have hardware units already available. So, well, thank you so much, Jono. If you guys do have uh, more questions, uh, be happy to answer them for you here in the future. I'll, I'll provide a little email address here at the end where you could ask us more questions. But certainly, you could reach out to your sales manager or uh, Dynacore contact. So, well, thanks again, Jono. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to follow us on, on many of the social platforms uh, to get the most up-to-date information. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you all soon.